Welcome to Theater of the Mind Entertainment, a Call of Cthulhu tabletop RPG playthrough radio drama featuring our victims John, Matt, and Don, and I'm your tomeskeeper, Cody. time on Theater of the Mind Entertainment. A hopefully restful night turns terrorizing when Oliver is visited by his worst nightmare and he passes out in the wake of his experience. Ted is perturbed by an ominous transmission on his radio that provides him with mysterious coordinates that keep him up all night. The next morning, John makes his way to Ben's apartment to find his colleague missing. Upon investigating the apartment, John finds the totem and much more. Ben wasn't imagining the totem last night. It was sitting on his nightstand. John encounters a monster in the apartment before he escapes. Oliver awakes in a panic and makes for Ted's home. The two unite and converse about the happenings from the night before. John, Ted, and Oliver meet at the diner and talk about the mysterious happenings. Oliver decides to make his way to the university to develop more photographs and to speak with the professor about the book. John and Ted arrive at the library and Ted pinpoints the coordinates on a small island near Massachusetts called Deer Island. Oliver visits his former teacher, Dr. Primwell, and is directed to Jackson Elias, an explorer and eclectic expert who lives in Boston. Oliver develops the new photographs and makes his way to the library. When the three unite, Oliver gives John his photos and John finds that his pictures render no suspicious images. They appear to be devoid of the details he conveyed to his partners about Cliff's death. Oliver also sees nothing, but Ted does see the dead body of Cliff and the disturbing details in the image. Ted keeps this information to himself. However, in a photo of the totem, Oliver sees the little girl, but Ted does not. The group concludes they all need to travel to the Boston area so John and Ted get in John's car while Oliver gets in his. The two vehicles make their way to Ted's apartment so John can make a phone call. While en route, an ominous fog envelops the road as an all too familiar glow radiates from John's back seat. Ted and John, you're driving down the street in the city and you hear this pulsating and you feel it reverberating inside your head. And you turn around and you see the totem sitting in the back seat of your car, just glowing and pulsating this green glow. Yeah, John, that, uh, that uh, is the totem back there. I quickly pull off to the side of the road and jump out of the car. Oh, Ted, don't, whatever you do, just don't, don't touch it. Oliver, you see this glowing hue and then all of a sudden John rips the car off to the side of the road and you see him jump out of the car frantically. I'm going to do my best to pull behind him and also get out of the car. You do. I approach their car and John. Look, I I swear to you guys, I did not bring that with me. John, what was glowing in your car? What is that? Look, the totem. The totem? I didn't know you had it with you. I didn't bring it. It's back there, though. How did it get there? Well, he didn't bring it, Oliver. Everybody give me a spot. Eight extreme success. Seven extreme success. Twenty-five hard. As you guys are outside of this car, discussing this totem, you begin to feel a little hazy and foggy in your head. All of you at the same time begin to feel kind of dreamy and you hear the city hustling and bustling behind you and it just gets quieter and quieter. You take a few steps and your steps are beginning to echo. 
almost as if you're in this large room or large auditorium and you look around and the city streets are completely desolate and you see this fog kind of beginning to rise slowly though and it begins to sort of fill the streets and you peer up into the sky and you see this dark rolling cloud as it begins to just bellow over the city Oh no, not not again. Look, we, we need to get out of here. Are you guys seeing this too? Oliver. What do you mean again? Look, Is this what happened at Ben's place? We need to get out of here. Ted, grab your stuff. I'm with John on this one. I think we should uh, not be near this right now. And I reach back in the car and grab my bag and start backing away as far as I can from the car. I throw the locks on my car doors and grab my bag out of the trunk and head towards Oliver's car. Look, look, the cloud. The cloud's coming in. Yeah, guys, let's, uh, let's go now. All right, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. Let's, let's get the hell out of here. While he's saying that, I'm already putting my bag and getting in his car. I run back to my car and get in the driver's seat. You all frantically race to Oliver's car, and you open the doors and you jump in. Oliver, you turn the key over, and your car's dead. You've got to be kidding me. That figures. Everybody give me a spot. A 29 success. 72 success. 57 fail. Ted, you're jumping in Oliver's car and you're kind of looking around to make sure you have all your belongings. John and Oliver, as you turn the key over, you peer up and you see probably 10 blocks away this shadow that begins to just form this mass and it begins rolling and just lumbering down the street. John, you recognize this beast from Ben's apartment. Not again. Not again. Roll sanity. 66, fail. John, as you peer at this thing and it stares straight back at you even from a distance with its piercing red eyes you get these flashback images of this thing chasing you and breathing down your neck in Ben's apartment and you completely lose control of your mind and the only thing you can think to do is to smash your head against the first thing you see to try to get this thing out of your mind because you believe that it is inside your brain trying to claw itself out. I see the creature running towards me, and I'm just so shaken up by it. I start smashing my head off the side of the window. Get out of my head! Get out! Jesus! John, are you okay? John, what What are are you doing? It's here! What's here? John, calm down. It's here! Oh my god. What's here, John? Look! John, you continue beating your head against the window. Oliver and Theodore, you peer over, and the window begins to spider and crack. And as John is just yelling, you see blood begin to run down John's face, and he just continues beating his head against the window. Oh my god. Ted, we, we gotta get him out of the car. I hop out of the passenger side and run around to his door and open it up and, and try to calm him. You open the door up, and John, your body just falls out. You're lying there unconscious, and he is bleeding from his head pretty bad. Well, now what the hell are we supposed to do? We, we gotta get out of here. You both look up, and you see this thing now only three blocks away. Give me a listen. A 99 fail. A 14 pass. Oliver, you're just standing there in shock as John is bleeding out on the pavement. Theodore, you hear, quick, quick, this way, coming from an alley behind you. I try to quickly scoop up John. Oliver, come on, help me. Both of you give me strength checks. A three extreme success. 100 fail. Theodore, You rush over to John and you try to pick him up and you feel where your wound was, where you were just stabbed. You feel it tear open and blood begins to pour back out of your arm. Uh, Oliver, come on. Oliver, you run over and you just pick up John 
you get this rush of adrenaline and you throw him over your shoulder. Ted, you'll be fine. Let's go. Fuck, man. <sighs> Follow me. And I try to go to where I heard the voice. You turn around and you see in the alley, there's this figure, this man, who you can't really make out because he has all these rags on and he kind of has a hood up over his face. And you see him standing above a manhole and he's motioning you, guys, come on, quick, get in here. I hobble my way there. I follow suit. You guys rush over. Get in, get in, come on, it's coming. What? Where are you taking us? No, get in. We don't have time. I follow the man. You guys descend down this manhole into the sewers. Oliver, give me a climb with John over your shoulder. 74 over 20. Theodore, you jump in and you quickly climb down. And this man still standing up uh, above the manhole, just kind of motioning everybody in. Oliver, you try to climb down this ladder with John slung over your shoulder and you sort of get down midway on this ladder and your arm begins to shake, the one that's holding on, and John begins just sliding backwards and you feel like if you let him go, that you're going to be okay, but if you hold on to him, you're going to fall. What do you do? Oh, shit. Shit, 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 I'm losing him. I'm losing him. I'm going to try to hold on to him. Okay. You try to hold on to him with all your might, and you fall straight back as you slip off of this ladder. You fall off this ladder, and you fall straight on your back, but luckily, John's body kind of breaks your fall. You only take three hit points as you smack the back of your head off of his. Whew. You guys see this figure climb down this ladder quickly and he quickly pulls the man over and he climbs back down to you guys we we have got to get out of here follow me and he takes off down the sewer Oliver man are you are you all right I thought I was gonna lose him there for a second but luckily his body broke my fall John give me a constitution check 41 success John from that fall you smack the ground and it's damp and it's cold and it jars you awake as Oliver's head smashes into your nose. Uh, where, what's going on? John, you gotta get up right now. And I proceed to try to help him up. <laughs> yeah, I also it's, help him up. They're coming, aren't they? <laughs> We're safe for the moment, but we, we, gotta, we gotta keep moving. So, something's coming, John, and I don't want to be here to find out what it is. Oh, I know what it is. Get me to my feet. He's delusional. We gotta, we gotta get him out of here. I think that fall really took a toll on him. You guys all get up and you begin following this man down through the sewers. And he wraps around and you make a bunch of different turns as you're following him through these sewers. And this moist kind of musty smell just fills your ears. And you hear these chattering and this chatter of these rats as they're running through the sewers as you're following this this guy. And you probably run for what seems like 10 blocks underneath the city. And you come to this round room, this, this sort of clearing in the sewers, and you see it's extremely well lit. And it takes a minute for your eyes to adjust. And when it does, you see all these Edison light bulbs just hanging there, being fed by these large cables, and there's this small generator just motoring away in the corner. And you see these tables set up around the room with all of these maps and these drawings. And you look over to your right-hand side, and there's this massive board with this yarn tied around these pushpins, and it looks like this guy is plotting out this map, and he gets into the center of this room. <sighs> we should be okay. What the hell are you guys doing here? I don't mean to be rude, uh, but who the hell are you? Uh, my, 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 name's, my name's Vince. Uh, I, I, I worked for NASA. Vince? Well, uh, I'm Theodore. Uh, the one with the head injury, who we should probably tend to is John, and that's Oliver. 
Uh, n- nice to meet you guys. Um, so what what was that uh, back there? If you you seem to know. Um, I, I what was it? More like when was it? Um, wh- what year is it to you guys? What year is it? <laughs> what, what do you mean to us? Okay, listen. There are a lot of things that I can't explain. I need to know what year you're from. If, I know that sounds weird. It's it's 1936 to to us, sir. Jesus Christ. Okay, this is gonna sound crazy. I'm from the year 2023, and I worked for NASA. What's a NASA? You don't know NASA? Oh, well, oh, Jesus, 1936. Of course you don't know NASA. Some type of government. Are you like a, a, a FBI agent? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I study space. You know, like the stars. Oh, you're an astrologer. Uh, sure. I'm going to make a psychology on Vince. Roll a 26, but I'm going to expand luck to pass. Okay, what are you trying to figure out? Trying to determine if what he's saying to me is true, as far as he knows it. 100%. You're getting the idea that he isn't nearly as confused as you are, and he is, in fact, a part of this thing he calls NASA. Oh, man. I mean, I don't have any reason to doubt you. You just pulled us from the mouth of hell back there. So, this NASA, I mean, what do you do there? Well, um, we track, you know, meteors and different gravitational pulls and just... I don't want to get too complicated. Just know that I I and my team, we do a lot of research into outer space. I mean... That's some pretty nifty stuff there, I'll tell you what. Wait, shh, shh. Everyone give me a listen. 14, success. 97, fail. 19, hard success. Theodore and John, you hear as he shushes you, you hear this sort of scraping sound coming from above you. You know it has to be coming from the streets because you look up and you see nothing but the sewer ceiling and the sewer walls but you hear this sort of pacing and this scratching. John, it sounds very familiar, like the scratching in Ben's apartment, but that actually sobers your state of mind and you snap out of your psychosis. I'm gonna take a guess, Vince, and say we don't want to disturb whatever that is. No, no, we do not. I look over at John, see that he hears it too. I take a handkerchief from my coat pocket and start wiping the blood off my face. Look, man, uh... Shh! Keep your voice down. It's gonna fucking get us. What is it? I don't know. Okay, guys, you obviously need filled in. I was tracking this this asteroid, this, this meteor, okay? And a normal day at the job in New York, just a normal day, and this thing, it changed course. Asteroids and meteors don't change course. So, it obviously piqued our interest. You know, could this be something like an alien or some sort of extraterrestrial being trying to contact us or make its way to Earth? So we began tracking this thing, and what we discovered over the, the few weeks that we were watching this, this meteor is every time it would shift course, it, we correlated it with these tremors that were happening all along the East Coast. And these tremors got... They got more and more intense. And so I I took a small team of of NASA scientists, I guess you could call us, and and we we began tracking these tremors all up and down the East Coast, and we we discovered the spot, we we discovered the 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 place where they originated from, and it was it was in Deer Island, Massachusetts. So we made our way up there and we found ourselves at this lighthouse, at like the base of this lighthouse. And these tremors got more intense, almost to the point where they were full-on earthquakes. And we discovered at the base of this this lighthouse that there were this... God, I don't even know how to describe the stone or this um, this thing. It, it was like a an ancient carved stone thing. And it was glowing. And it was just... It was weird. Did you happen to touch this ancient stone carving thing? Well, of course. I had to take it to NYU. NYU. Guys, not to interrupt here for a second, but Vince, you said Deer Island, Massachusetts? Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. I mean, it's a, it's nothing. There's nothing up there. I mean, 
there's a small town. I look around. Is there just a table near us? Yeah. I mean, maybe you know something about this more than I do. And, and I walk over to the table, and I pull the papers out of my bag, and I, I start sending them down the table. Vince, come on. Look at this. What exactly are you showing Vince? I go ahead and uh, pull out of my bag the pieces of scribbled paper I have with the map coordinates and a couple of the pieces of like the atlases that I tore out that basically mark where those coordinates went. And I, I lay them out for Vince. I don't know how to say this, Vince, but I heard these on the radio last night. You heard you heard what on the radio? I, I was woken up in the middle of the night and there was, there was a voice speaking to me, uh, calling for help. And it... It was spitting out these coordinates, and, and when I laid them out, this is where they went, and I point to Deer Island. Okay, um, I can't explain that. I mean, nothing? I mean, you're from some future I can't even dream of. Sure, but I, I, I told you, I mean, I, I found this thing uh, in Deer Island, but I don't know why the hell you would receive some freaking radio transmission. Do you have a way to get back to your time? Not, not that I know of. Uh, I mean, there were others. There, there was, there were other people like me, um, but we all, they all began to disappear. I skewed back up the papers and kind of stuff them back in my bag. Yeah, I mean, I'll figure it out, Vince. So Vince, short for Vincent, I'm assuming. Uh, yes. This item that you found at the lighthouse, what did it look like? Oh shit! It was. It's like an eyeball with a, a snake, like, wrapped around it. It was like a, an old stone, like a... Like a totem? Yeah, like a totem. I think I might know where you can find that if you want it back. I don't. All right. And the symbol sounds an awful lot like something that um, we've come across before, John. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it is. So, anyway, I was taking the totem to this, this Dr. Brennan. He's one of my contacts at NYU. And when we were driving there, we got to New York and we parked our car and we were freaking attacked by these guys in these fucking robes. Like, literally, these guys in these robes in broad daylight freaking attacked us. And as they were attacking us, this rock thing just began to freaking glow. And then all of a sudden, like... I was sucked into this this place that, that we're in now, and it was the weirdest thing, though. I started seeing people from, like, other times. I saw, like, these old-timey people in top hats and wearing freaking... wearing, like, stuff like you have on. Whoa, whoa Vincent. <laughs> Some things never go out of style, man. Well, I can assure you, uh, in the year 2023, that getup was so 2018. I don't know what that means. So I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, Vince, or Vincent, whichever you'd prefer. Um, let me just say, the cars that you've seen us by, the totem was in one of those vehicles. We were driving out of the city, and it just appeared with us. Well, from, from everything that I can understand, after we were attacked and after we got sucked into this thing, right, this creature that we're currently running from appeared and began like taking and devouring people. And I, that's when I ran away. I feel like this totem is some sort of calling beacon for this thing. Every time the totem glows, this, this thing appears. And I don't know what the hell it is, but I know that I don't want to be anywhere near that fucking totem. What makes it glow? I have no clue. Absolutely no idea. And you see him turn around, and he walks over to this table, and you see him sort of flip this box up, this slender little box, and it opens up and, like, cuts in two, and you see him, like, push this button, and this screen blinks on and begins to glow. Whoa, what is that? That's some fancy, uh, device you got there. It's, uh, oh, God, I keep forgetting. It's a computer. Uh, a what? A, a what now? Don't worry about it. And he begins furiously typing and looking at things and checking charts and graphs. Okay, guys, come here. Come here, check this out. So you see here, at this point in time that I think I was taken, 
you see this little spike in the chart and you're looking and you're seeing this line graph and you see all of these lines and some of them spike really high and they get low and they spike high and they get low. This is when I noticed the tremors and I mapped it to when I believe I was sucked into this thing. And you see right here, and he points further on down the line, that tremor, that spike, is when I found you. I pull my camera out and take a picture of the computer. You snap a picture. I don't know what all of those lines represent, but it seems like that blip where you found us is a lot bigger than everything else. Well, exactly. I mean, I don't know exactly what it means, but I do know that when a tremor occurs, that typically means some crazy shit is happening and the totem is glowing. A tremor like an earthquake? I mean, that's what they feel like, but I know there's they're not actually earthquakes, so I can't really explain it. So just an increase in some kind of activity whenever the totem starts to glow. I mean, as best as I can tell, yeah, I don't know what that activity is, though. I'm listening to both of them talk, but I'm kind of enamored with the device that he has in front of him. So, uh, would it hurt if I check that out, Vince? Uh, just don't hit too many buttons. Oh, no, no problem, man. Um, that's, that's awesome. Uh, and I kind of walk over and just look at it and poke around gently. So, um, do you, do you like technology stuff, or...? Well, I mean, I don't know what this computer thing is or whatever you call it but uh does it do radio <laughs> of course it does radio like wh what kind of stations can you get on here <sighs> um well you can kind of get anything uh, i don't think this is the time oh, oh yeah uh sorry vince um anyway as you were saying <laughs> yeah um so what, what's our what's our game plan i mean i don't know you but i don't have any reason to distrust you but i mean i don't i don't really like hanging out in the sewer right now this is the only place i feel safe how long have you been here <sighs> time is so weird um i mean i'm calculating in our time probably maybe a month a month and a half and like i said i mean we've there were others and we just had to learn how to survive in this place and occasionally they would go up and they would just never come back but I can't be sure. I walk over to uh, the board with the strings and the push pins. What is this? Well, this is me tracking the tremors. And if you see here, and he gets all excited, he walks over briskly. If you see here, there, there's there's this tremor, and you can follow this line, and it just it just goes up the east coast, and you see this cluster right in Massachusetts on Deer Island. That's that's where they're all from, and they just kind of spider out from there. But they all seem seem secluded at Deer Island. The place where our coordinates are telling us to go. That's the epicenter? I guess so. Um, hey, I, I tell you what. He walks over to this table and you guys see him pick up some gadgets. And he turns on this radio, Ted. But it looks a little more advanced than what you're, what you're used to. I tell you what, take, take this. I can tune into this frequency whenever I want. If we get separated, I'll, I'll try to contact you. Maybe if you guys happen to get back to the other side somehow, I'll, I'll get a hold of you. Hopefully, maybe. I go ahead and take it out of his hand. So where's the uh, dials on this thing as I'm searching it? Oh, okay, uh, quick crash course. And he just shows you all of these crazy buttons and these knobs and this like weird digital interface that you've never seen and you're trying to take all of this information in give me a knowledge radio check 15 extreme so for whatever reason even though you've never seen this thing before you are absorbing this like a five-year-old sponge that's a five-year-old child by the way and you feel like you are able to work this radio as he's discussing and teaching you how to work this thing. Everybody give me a listen. 51 fail. 28 success. 54 success. Theodore, you are just enamored by this thing, and you don't hear anything. You just hear his voice. John and Oliver, you hear 
this scratching sound that just echoes throughout this sewer and it sounds like these claws are dragging along the stone wall of the sewers. What? What? What is that noise? Fuck! Shit! I think it found us. Guys, we gotta get out of here. Come on! I stuff the device in my pocket. You see him frantically. He slams this computer shut and he shoves it in a bag. Guys, we gotta get out of here. And he takes off running. Please, come on, follow me. We gotta get out of here. I just take off running behind him. You all begin running through these sewers, and you're following him as you're sloshing through this dirty, disgusting water. And you come up to this other manhole, and he climbs the ladder quickly and, and gets out on the street. You guys all climb up and follow suit, and you're, you find yourselves out in the middle of the city, and it's just desolate and bare once again. Uh, no different than when we left. Guys, I don't like the look of this, and I really don't want to be up here. Do you recognize where we're at? How far away are we from our cars? You look around, and you're about seven blocks from where your cars were parked. Vince, where to now? Fuck, guys, just just run. And as you're running down the street, your footsteps just echo unnaturally around you, and you hear these claws underneath you coming from the ground, the scratching and scraping sound. And all of a sudden, you begin to hear chatter and talking, and car noise begins to seep into existence, and you hear Vincent's voice begin to fade. Keep the radio on you. Keep it on you at all times. I will try to contact you. As you're running, and his voice just fades away, and you stop and you look around and you're standing in the busy streets of New York City and you hear this honking noise. These cars just honking their horns and you look down towards the noise and you see both of your cars parked along the street, not moving with a pile up and a traffic jam behind them with angry people just honking. What? what? Where, where did we just come from? Oliver, uh, uh... What are you people looking at? Let's get back to our cars, guys. So I'm the only one who is questioning what just happened? I don't have time to question Oliver. Looks like we're back where we started almost. Almost. Just a couple blocks away. Well, let's go get our cars out of the middle of the road, for starters. Well, I'm still a little woozy. It's... Hey, Ted, do you think you can drive my car? Without a problem, man. I'm pretty sure I can. After he says that, I reach down in my bag and pull out the radio I was given if it's still there. It is still there. Tuck it back in. That's a fancy talk box you got there. It's something, man. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> a lot of buttons on that thing. Hell of a lot of buttons, Oliver. I hope we can use it for something. We'll figure it out. You guys begin making your way to the car and you walk up to your cars. John, you peer into the back seat and the totem is gone. What do you see, John? Are my doors still locked? They are. Well, we're definitely dealing with something unnatural if we haven't figured that out by now. Get the hell out of the way! Shut the fuck up! We're busy here! Look! Busy! Yeah, that's what I thought! Get in your fucking car! All right, John, let's not, uh, let's not piss off the angry New Yorkers any more than we have to. I walk over to my car, I get in and make sure that the book is still in the back. You look in the back and the book is still there. Tremendous. I look from the driver's seat to see if the two in front of me are in their car. I go ahead and walk up and try the door. You get in. All right, John. Uh, I kind of lean back out the car. Where are we going, guys? Boston. Enough for me. You guys begin down the road, heading towards Boston to meet with Jackson Elias. So you guys are traveling for about two hours at this point, and you know you have about an hour and a half to two hours ahead of you, and you're getting a bit hungry, and you know you need to fill up your gas tanks. Theodore, you see a sign for a gas station up ahead. Hey, hey, Ted, do you think we can stop a bit? I just, I need to get something to eat. I gotta fucking get cleaned up here. Ugh, fuck me, man. I gotta stretch my legs. I stick my hand out the window and wave so Oliver can see me that we're gonna pull in. Theodore, you go ahead and you pull into the station, and Oliver, you pull in behind them. And you pull up to this small, it's a very small sort of gas station market. It's a little bit run down, 
Uh, but you know there's some warm food to be had and some gas to fill your tanks. As soon as I put the car in park and shut it off, just lean back in the seat. Oh, oh. shit. Yeah, man, I'm <clears throat> sorry about freaking out back there. I, are you feeling all right, John? I mean, you did take a pretty bad blow on the head. And then, you know, Oliver dropping you down a I ladder. He what? At this point, I pull it beside them, get out of my car, and walk to the window um, where John is sitting, and I tap on the window for him to roll the window down. Yeah, Oliver, tell John about how you dropped him down a ladder. Why do you got to bring that up immediately? I see him start to shift in his own skin. All right, well, if you guys want to get something to eat, I really feel like talking, if we can. We, we need to talk about what we are going to do from here. You guys head into the market, and you look up, and you see this sweet little old lady standing behind the cash register. Hi. Good, good, good day to you. What can I get you? Uh, can I get a cup of coffee? And uh, what's on the special today? Well, we have uh, some cold sandwiches. The coffee hasn't been fresh for about five hours. But if you can handle all that, I think I can help you out. I'll take some of that. Is there a bathroom around here? Uh, yeah, right right to the back there. I don't think it's been cleaned for about two months, but good luck. Huh. Thanks. And I make my way to the bathroom to clean up. I pull out some bills and hand it to her. Yeah, and if you could uh, just get the gas boy to fill us up. Uh, I'm sure I can do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. And she's kind of just standing there squinting looking around like she's having a hard time focusing and seeing what she's doing you see her walk over and start typing on the cash register Uh oh fiddlesticks as she hits this wrong button and the cash register pops open and she slams it shut dang it and she's tapping and and getting very irritated andy can you get out here and help me with this damned register and you see this older gentleman walk out and he takes the money from this old woman, and he very easily puts it into the register. I lean over to John. You can really tell who runs the place. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. So as you guys are getting your meals, you wait about 10 minutes, and you sit down, and you do notice that this Andy walks out and fills your cars up. <clears throat> hey, uh, Oliver, Ted, I know I, I mentioned it a little earlier, but uh, sorry for losing my shit back there. Yeah, what was that all about? You started banging your head against anything you could find in the back seat. Well, when I first came into contact with that totem, I really don't know at this point what all I mentioned, but uh, as you saw the world at that point, when that green, that sickening green glow happened from the totem, that's how it was in Ben's apartment. So everything, pretty much everything you experienced today is everything I experienced that, well, I guess it would be this morning in Ben's apartment when I first came into contact with the totem and that creature was there and I just just seeing it again it just overwhelmed me I just felt like it was clawing its way in, out of my head or in my head and I had to bash my way out of it and I just uh, just really lost my shit guys I'm, I'm really sorry about that uh John no no need to apologize man I you know I didn't quite believe you 100% when you told us that story um I'm not gonna lie it sounded a little crazy but uh I don't, I don't know what I just saw back there, but damn, I don't no need to apologize. Yeah, I don't blame you. The, the funny thing is, <clears throat> I'd, I'd mentioned yesterday and maybe even today about how Ben and I went up north and uh, met that Cliff Danhill, the old man that uh, found the Mortania. I mean, basically, it's where my whole investigation started. He was, when he killed himself, it seemed like he was overwhelmed, just em- emotionally he spoke of people things coming for us and i just wonder if how i felt in the car was how he felt when he killed himself hey man try try not to dwell on it i mean we got i don't want to change the subject here but we we got some bigger fish to fry at the moment uh yes yeah yeah, of course so our destination oliver well i know that the first thing that i want to do is talk to jackson elias if anybody's going to be able to give me information on this book, it's going to be this Jackson Elias. I pull out uh, the business card that Professor Primo gave me, and I show it to to you two. There's a phone number here for Elias's secretary. I'm planning on giving her a call and trying to set up an appointment with him. Well, uh, no better time than now. Why don't you go ahead and see if 
Old Bess over there has a phone. It's a good idea. I get up and I go over to the counter. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, does this establishment have a telephone? Um, yeah, um, we do. Um, where did I put that damned thing? Usually they're connected to a wall. Uh, smart ass. And you see her kind of turn around and she grabs this telephone and outstretches the cord over the counter and hands it to you. I take the phone. Thank you. Would you be so kind as to type this telephone number in on the dial? Sure. And she turns around and she picks up the business card and she holds it really close to her large glasses. And she begins dialing. Okay. And she hands it back to you. The phone rings. Jackson Elias' office. Uh, This is Natalie speaking. How can I help you? Hello, Natalie. My name is Dr. Oliver McDowell. I am looking to set up an appointment to see Mr. Elias, if at all possible. Okay, well, Mr. Elias, he's currently settling back in from an expedition, uh, but he should be due back tomorrow. Um, You said your name was Oliver McDowell? That's correct. Okay, well, what time would you like to meet with him? I can always check with him to see when he's available tomorrow. Whatever is best for him. Uh, My schedule is pretty free. Okay, well, uh, do we have a way to get in contact with you, or would you just like to maybe show up at the office at maybe around 1 o'clock tomorrow, and hopefully he'll be available? Honestly, that would be fine. I'm actually on my way there, so I can show up whenever the office opens, and if you could give me a time, I can come back whenever he is available. Okay, well, I'll be in the office at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and maybe we can set something up then. That sounds great. Okay, well, I'll see you then, Oliver. All right, thank you very much. Uh Have a good day. You do the same. Bye-bye. Bye. And you hang up the phone. I look at the old lady, and I'm like, thank you very much. And I slide her a whole quarter across the counter. Oh, thank you so much. And you see her try to grab the quarter, and she grabs this small piece of paper instead, and then she gets frustrated and throws it to the ground and grabs the quarter. Hey, Oliver, uh, what did you find out? I possibly maybe have an appointment with Jackson Elias tomorrow sometime between 9 and 5. Doesn't sound very definite, but I guess that's all we have to go on right now. He just got back from an expedition of some kind. This guy sounds like he's pretty eclectic, uh, which which is a good sign. Maybe he'll be able to help us. You guys head out and begin heading to your cars. Theodore and John, you jump in. And Oliver, you jump in. And Oliver, give me a spot check. 24, hard success. Oliver, when you get in and you close the door, you start up the engine and you're getting ready to pull out. And you see Andy kind of come running out with something in his hand. And he runs around to the driver's side door and taps on the window. I roll down my window. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, hi. Yes, um, I just wanted to give this candy bar to the sweet young lady sitting in the back. What do you mean? I slowly turn my head towards the back seat of the car. As you slowly turn your head, you look in the back seat and nobody's there. Here you are, here you are, sweetie. Um, you'd be good. And he kind of winks to somebody in the back seat. Roll sanity. 47 over 44, fail. Oliver, you, for whatever reason, feel like if you drive your car fast enough, you will outrun whatever is in your car, and you need to get away as fast as you possibly can. There is no limit to how fast you can get away right now. Oh my god! I just kick the car into reverse and just peel out. Theodore and John, you see Oliver just spin tire in reverse, not acknowledging anything behind him, and you see him slam into this sign, kick it in drive, and just pedal to the metal as he just kicks up all of these stones and rocks. Give me a drive check. 22 over 30, success. So as you kick it in drive and you slam the pedal down, you see straight in front of you, Andy standing there, white, like wide-eyed, just freaking out, and you cut the wheel at the last yeah. minute, and you do not slam into him, and you take off down the highway. What the fuck is he doing? I slowly finish chewing my cold sandwich. 
He's motivated. And that's where we're going to call it. And that concludes our show for this evening. Please, if you like what we're doing, leave us a review, and you can find us on Twitter at Tomescast. Until next time, ta-ta.